Hey guys, Ivan here, and in today's video we got a couple of very interesting bodybuilding updates. First one is from Rubiel Mosquera, aka Nexilla, and we got this physique update from him. It's a side chest pose. Uh, we are a little bit over four weeks out of uh, Dubai Pro, where Nexilla is going to compete and, in my opinion, win a Mr. Olympia qualification, because I don't know any other heavy hitters doing that show, so he's most likely the favorite to win it. But you never know who else might jump in, we're gonna talk about that in a second, but as far as Nexilla, as you can see right here in this side chest pose, he looks absolutely nuts. He's one of the biggest guys, if not the biggest guy in the IFBB today, and back when Nexilla was in the IFBB Elite Pro, his problem was always conditioning. He was never really conditioned, he never had that quality, that muscle maturity or whatever you wanna call it. He had it though last year at the Prague Pro when he turned pro and uh, did a pro debut, but it still could have been better. But I think now, after seeing a couple of updates from Nexilla, he's actually starting to get it even more. So in this photo, you can see that his conditioning is pretty much spot on for four weeks out. He's gonna get sharper, hopefully even more conditioned than last year, and I think he gained a little bit more of that maturity, like I said. Here is another photo that he posted a couple of days ago. It's not a full physique update, but the lighting is very good and the photo is uh, high quality, so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. So he is starting to gain that, that, that hardness, that, that gnarly look that he never had before, but is finally starting to obtain it. And I think he's also fixing his weak points. For example, in this uh, most muscular right here, you can't really see any weaknesses, like his arms are big and full, the triceps are full, the biceps are as well, the brachialis is popping out, the forearms are even big, uh, the chest, look at the freaking chest, look at that upper chest, man, like he has so much fullness everywhere. The shoulders, however, you could say that his shoulders are a weak point, but I mean, it's only compared to the rest of his body, I mean, his shoulders are also pretty good. The traps, let's not even go there, let's not even talk about his traps and his neck. That's where he can be, that's where he can downsize, actually, but it's also giving him that, that freak factor. And the legs, we don't see them here, but you know, they are the biggest in the world right now. So this is the guy that I'm looking forward the most to seeing him at the Mr. Olympia compared to all of the top guys. Because, I mean, he has all it takes to be up there, to be compared to the best uh, where will he place the Mr. Olympia? That's a really good question. I think he's definitely a top 10 material, and with all this size, he's gonna dwarf a lot of people. So, in my eyes, he can be a top 6 guy. You know, top 6, top 7. I can definitely see him up there. So, this Instagram page, who is the best bodybuilder, made this post. Uh, it's basically all the qualified Olympia competitors as of right now. You would think there are more guys, I mean, like two years ago, there were like over 30 guys at that stage, but right now, we only have 11 guys. So as you can see, we have Rafael Brandau, probably a top 10 guy, Martin Fitzwater, also, I would say top 10 guy, Nick Walker, Hadi Chopin, Samson Dowd, and Derek Lansford, most likely top 4 guys, Brandon Curry, a top 5, potentially even a top 4 guy, Theo Leguerre, I couldn't even remember when he qualified, but I think it was Japan Pro last year, and I don't think he's the top top 10 guy, uh, William Bonac, top 10, I would say, Akeem Williams also, Antonio Burton, I don't know, he was, he was 8 last year, but... We'll see, this year lineup is gonna be much tougher. So these are all the guys right now, but there's gonna be a lot more guys, so it's gonna be very competitive, very difficult to crack that top 10. And Exila is one of the guys who is gonna qualify soon, and in my opinion, be in that top 10, more likely even higher. I think, I would say, if his conditioning is on, if he's really on, if he peaks well, I can see him in that top 7 this year at the Mr. Olympia, his first Mr. Olympia. What do you guys think? Do you think that's possible? As I said, he's doing Dubai Pro, and there are no other top pros really doing that show, but as I said, you never know who might jump in. Maybe Nathan Diasha, maybe William Bonac, maybe Becker Stabadi jump in. Maybe Brandon Curry could jump in. So he posted this photo on his stories recently. He didn't specify if this is recent or not, I don't know if it is, but it very well could be. I know he's over there in Kuwait training. He doesn't have to qualify for the Mr. Olympia. He won the Mr. Olympia. He's qualified for life. But I don't know. I mean, he already competed at the Dubai Pro and the prize money is huge right now. So 
it would make a lot of sense for him to jump in and win that money. I'm not saying it would be an easy show for him to win against Nexilla especially, but he would be the favorite, you know, he won the Mr. Olympia, guys, he won the Arnold Classic twice, and I don't think he's any worse, I don't think age took a toll on his body, no, last year he was fourth at a Mr. Olympia, and if you guys remember, he was hospitalized a day before the show, so he definitely didn't have ideal conditions, he definitely wasn't able to carb up properly, to do everything uh, the proper, the best way, and even though it was, let's say, a faded version of himself, still he cracked that top four. And just look at him right here compared to Hari, compared to Derek, compared to Hunter Labrada, even Andrew Jack and Samson Dauda, he's definitely not lacking any muscle to still hang with the top boys. And for the past few years, people were kind of discrediting this guy, not really giving him the respect that he deserves, and even right now, not a lot of people mention this guy when they talk about Mr. Olympia predictions, because probably they're expecting that he's gonna, that age is gonna take the toll on his body, but it's just not happening, and with the way he's training, with the way he's approaching his preps, taking a lot of time off, and only training hard and, and, and prepping hard when he's in Kuwait, like four, five, six months before the show, I can see this guy having a, like crazy longevity, something like Dexter Jackson, I can see that, and here at this show, because he wasn't able to carb up because he was in the hospital, uh, his legs are the, the thing that goes away first when he's not full, when he flattens out, because his legs are definitely his weakest muscle, and so here they were definitely smaller than his upper body, but if you compare just the size of it to, for example, Hunter here, I don't see a big difference, I don't think his legs actually look that much smaller, even if you compare them to somebody like Derek, if you compare them to somebody like Samson or Hadi, it's definitely, it's definitely visible, but, but it's really not that big of an issue, and if he comes in 100% peaked, with good conditioning and good fullness at the same time, I mean, this guy can actually surprise a lot of people, which probably shouldn't even be a surprise, I can see him beating one of the top four guys, and if this is recent, he definitely looks pretty fresh, so I hope he's gonna do the Dubai Pro, which will definitely put more eyes on him, if he only does the Mr. Olympia, people will not really have any kind of expectations from him, because he is an older bodybuilder, any year his body will start to fade, we don't know when, but if we see him, if he wins like the Dubai Pro, people will talk about him, and I think he actually has, he's probably, he would probably win the Dubai Pro if he did it, even though Nexilla is doing it, I can see Brandon Curry beating Nexilla, because, yeah, he, he's that good, you can't deny him, he won the Mr. Olympia, he is the Mr. Olympia, guys, even though it wasn't the most competitive Mr. Olympia lineup ever, he still beat, you know, William Bonac at his best, Harry Chopin, who was also very good that year, so, you know, he, he's definitely one of the top guys, again, we don't know if this is recent, officially he's not doing Dubai Pro, but don't be too surprised if he jumps in, alright, next up, we got a physique update from Nathan Diasha, very transparent physique update, we can see exactly what his physique looks like, two days out of Italy Pro, Flex Pro, can he win this show, that's a big question, he is gonna be facing a new and improved Bekru Stabani, and if he wins, if Nathan wins, this would be his 13th pro win, does he look like he can win, I mean, sure, why not, he looks very good right now, and this is the main photo, he posted a couple of photos, but this one really caught my attention, because you can see his legs here very clearly, and you can get an idea of whether he improved them or not, because in his off-season physique updates, his legs looked like he definitely grew them, and I was really curious to see how much of that muscle will stay once he diets down, and I gotta tell you, based on these physique updates, it seems like his legs grew, I don't remember his uh, outer sweep, his lateralis ever being this good, this prominent, and again, this is two days out, he's gonna dry out more, and probably get even fuller and harder, so his legs on the stage are gonna look better than this, they're gonna be more separated and probably even fuller, the cuts are gonna get deeper and you're gonna see more details, but with the improvements he made, this is gonna be a better version of Nathan Diasha, and also you guys know that he is coached by Stefan Kinzel, arguably the best coach in the world right now, 
I mean, Hunter Amber is probably the best one, but he's only coaching a couple of guys. But as far as the coaches that have many clients, lately, Stefan Kinzel has been killing it. He didn't miss a peak with one of his bodybuilders. Everybody comes in at their absolute best. So we can be pretty sure that Nathan is going to absolutely bring it to this show. So he's going to get even better, I'm sure, in those two days. And here's the thing, last year Nathan did multiple shows, I think like four shows, something like that, all European shows, and he looked absolutely, definitely looked the best at his first show, which was Italy also. So I'm expecting him to be at his absolute best at this show as well. And again, I can see improvements, not a crazy amount, because also this guy is a veteran basically at this point, but I think his legs do look bigger. And like with his uh, conditioning, usual conditioning and muscle maturity and like the hardness and with the help of Stefan Kinzel to peak him, to get him as full and as dry as possible, it's gonna be hard to deny him. I mean, I know how good Becker's is, but at this show, Nathan is gonna be very hard to beat. And also, Becker's competed one week ago. Can he really peak that well again in only one week? Nathan is gonna be completely fresh. This is his first show of the season. Here is also a little video, he looks really good, really complete, really detailed, really big, really full, hope he controls that stomach better on the stage though, but you know, overall, he is good, man. It's gonna be very difficult for Beckers to beat him, it's gonna be a close battle, that's for sure. We also got a physique update from Beckers the Bunny at two days out, and I mean, here, he looks pretty dry, I mean, I don't know what kind of peak week he did last week, how extreme was it, because if you dehydrate too extremely, it's usually difficult to get back in your absolute best shape in only one week, and these shows are back to back, one week difference. So if his approach is simple, he only depletes and then carbs up for the show and dehydrates a little, then doing shows back to back is the easiest thing ever, just repeat the process and you peak again, but if you did something more extreme, it might be difficult to get rid of the water, because you're gonna have a lot of water retention after the show once you start drinking, so this can be tricky, this is not as easy to peak well, to be really dry and full at the same time as it will be for Nathan, so I don't know if we should expect backers at his absolute best, but if he brings the same thing he brought to the Ampro Cup Spain, and based on this physique update, I think he can do it. I mean, I'm not sure, but I think he can. He looks dry enough for two days out. If he repeats the same look, can he beat Nathan Diasha? I don't know. I don't know, it's really difficult to say, but last year, at Romania Pro, if you guys remember, Bacharos placed second after Samson Dauda, and Nathan took fourth. So Beckers beat him by two spots, but this was Beckers' first show of the season, and I think it was fourth or even fifth show for Nathan Diasha. So he probably couldn't peak perfectly, he was probably holding a little bit of water, maybe he was a little bit flat, I don't think this was Nathan at his absolute best peak. He was good, he was on, but Beckers was as good as he could have been, I think Nathan was slightly off. But Beckers improved a lot in this past offseason, I think his legs are definitely much bigger now. The video quality is not exactly the best, so you can't see exactly what was going on, but I think like Beckers' biggest flaw was the size of the legs, but he was, I think he was sharper, more conditioned, and he had better structure, nicer flow to the physique. So it was enough last year, and Beckers improved, I think, more than Nathan did. But I think Nathan is gonna be spot on this year, and Beckers... I don't know if he can pull it off, but we'll see, it's gonna be very interesting, because these guys are pretty close, I think it's gonna be a very, very close decision, whichever way it goes, what do you guys think, I'm really curious to hear what do you guys think, can you really set your mind and tell me who do you think is better, who is actually gonna win, because this one is very, very difficult to me, but if I had to pick one right now, I think I would go with Nathan Diash. Yeah, that's how I feel right now, but who the hell knows, we'll see in two days from now. Whatever you guys think, tell me down below in the comment section. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more bodybuilding videos like this, guys, please subscribe to this channel. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon. All the best and bye-bye.